Hello everyone. In this class, we will try to learn about organization of the motor system. Learning objective of this class would be to understand the general organization of the motor system, name the types of movement and give their characteristics, appreciate the role of feedback control system in the improvement of motor functions, understand the role of each component of motor system in the execution of motor functions. Ability to move is an essential feature of animal life. Locomotion or movement is crucial for survival of organisms. Fulfilling fundamental needs of life and appropriate interaction to environment needs execution of suitable and coordinated movements. Though precise and harmonious movements, one expresses his best abilities like an artist drawing a beautiful picture or a surgeon performing successful operation, etc. Motor system deals with the study of physiology of movement. The motor physiology involves initiation, execution and control of movements. For any movement to be appropriately carried out, a stable and maintained posture is the basic necessity. With the help of stable postural background and with appropriate postural adjustment, coordinated movement becomes possible. Therefore, motor physiology deals with study of control of movement and posture together. There are various aspects of movement. The movements can be broadly divided into two categories, the automatic movements and the volitional movements. The automatic movements are reflexive in nature. An example of an automatic movement is rapid response to a nociceptive stimulus. The following are the characteristics of reflexive movements. They have a short latency they are stereotyped in nature, they are executed rapidly, usually they cannot be modified, they are not under voluntary control and they are triggered by a specific sensory stimulus. The volitional movements are under voluntary control uh, and they are also called as intentional movements. They can be easily modified, for example, volitional movement is painting, threading a needle. The characteristics of such movement are they have a long latency, they are slow in execution, can be modified easily, they are under voluntary control and are triggered by specific sensory stimulus and they may be affected by factors like attention, emotion and motivation. What is movement? The movement is defined as a displacement of body parts that results in change in position of the body as a whole or a part of the body. The movement is produced by contraction and relaxation of the muscles. The muscles that facilitate a particular movement, that is a decrease in angle at the point are called as agonists. The muscles that oppose the movement, that is increase the angle at the movement are called as antagonists. In fact, movement can be facilitated by relaxation of the antagonist muscle. How does the movement occur? The movement occurs due to the motor signals generated in the motor neurons in the spinal cord. This is accomplished by the activities initiated in the central nervous system. For basic or reflexive movement to be executed, the motor signal generated in the spinal cord convert to the appropriate muscles via motor neurons. However, for a complex or volitional movements, uh, to be appropriately executed, first the signals are generated in the forebrain, that is mainly in the motor cortex and brainstem, and then the signals are relayed uh, to the spinal cord. The spinal cord interacts with the supraspinal influences for the integration and the refining of the final output signal. Thus, precision and stability of movements are achieved by various feedback control mechanisms. So the movement usually initiated in the motor cortex then goes to the brain stem then to the spinal cord so there it is executed it is sent to the motor output for the movement and uh, it has a sensory feedback okay so where sensory output is going going to modify the the motor out eventually feedback control system the feedback systems are meant to improve the quality of movement the accuracy and stability in 
execution of motor activities are the objectives of feedback control system. The feedback mechanisms can be divided into three types, local feedback, central feedback and special sensory feedback. The local feedback is the lowest level of feedback system. It is exclusively integrated in the spiral cord. Dufferent signals does not interact with the supraspinal signals originating from various parts of the CNS. Thus, it, is, it acts fast and controls cross reflexive movement. The local feedback operates for moments in which the speed is more important than accuracy of the movement. For example, during withdrawal of the body parts in response to noxious stimuli, the body part must be withdrawn faster no matter how precisely it is done. However, the pattern of movement depends on the strength and nature of the afferent inputs. The central feedback is the second level of feedback control system. It is integrated in the spinal cord, brainstem and cortex. In this feedback mechanism, afferent signal satisfactorily interacts with the other signals arising from different parts of the supraspinal segments. For processing and integration of signals at various levels, the speed of execution is considerably delayed. However, with slowness, the precision of movement is achieved. The central feedback mechanism operates when uh, accuracy of the movement is paramount importance than the speed of execution. For example, uh, threading the needle, the movement needs proper balance and coordination to achieve the precision. Special sensory feedback is a mechanism which involves sensory information like visual and auditory inputs. This movement becomes most accurate with control by this feedback system. For example, to hit a nail with a hammer becomes easier and accurate with the eyes open. In this system, inputs from special sensory structures interact with the different parts of the central nervous system to improve the accuracy of the movement. So this is uh, the diagrammatic representation, voluntary command from the brain which is generated goes to the spinal cord and it reaches the muscle which is going to execute the movement okay. and there are the feedback mechanisms, local feedback mechanisms which gives information to the spinal cord for the correction of the mo movement so which is uh, rapid in nature where the central feedback which is required for the, the precise action and it is going to give its feedback to the, the brain and other structures and uh, it is going to execute the precise movement. Coming to organization of the motor system, the components of most motor systems are muscle and its efferent connection, the segmental circuit that is in the spinal cord, the brainstem controlling centers, the basal ganglia, cerebellum and cerebellar cortex. <coughs> Muscles and efferent connections. The, import, the important components of motor system are muscles and their efferent connections, that is the motor neurons. Tone of the muscle depends on its intact innervation. Without the muscle tone, adequate force cannot be generated for execution of the movements. Therefore, lesion of the motor neuron that abolishes muscle tone and function results in complete paralysis. Thus, muscle and motor neurons are fundamental parts of the motor system. Spinal segmental circuit Sensory seg signals arising from the muscle enter the spinal cord through the muscle afferents. These sensory inputs directly or indirectly influence the motor neurons that in turn innervate the same muscle. This circuit of neuronal connection constitutes local or segmental spinal circuit. The segmental circuit is very essential for all rapid reflexive movements. Also local circuit in the spinal cord generates and controls basic neural patterns required for genesis and coordination of the limb movements. Brainstem controlling centers. The activities of motor neurons and interneurons in the spinal cord are largely influenced by descending inputs ascending arising from the brainstem motor nuclei. The descending pathways from the brainstem to the spinal cord are mainly the extrapyramidal system. 
the descending pathway from brain stem reticular nuclei is the reticular spinal tract and from uh, vestibular nuclei is the vestibular spinal tract these two extrapyramidal pathways profoundly influence the activities of the motor neurons in the spinal cord that maintain that mainly control the postural movements the motor cortex directly controls the spinal cord motor neurons through corticospinal tracts it also strongly influences the brain stem nuclei what via corticobulbar projections from where the extrapyramidal tracts originate thus the motor cortex both directly and indirectly regulate the peripheral motor activities sensory cortex projects to the motor cortex and also contributes to the corticospinal fibers the input from somatosensory cortex to the motor cortex provide feedback information to the descending motor signals for alteration and improvement of the motor performance thus cortex is one of the levels of sensory motor coordination basal ganglia basal ganglia are important uh, subcortical structures that strongly influence motor activities they do not receive any direct somatosensory input from the spinal cord however basal ganglia project to the motor cortex via thalamus and strongly influence the motor output to the spinal cord basal ganglia are involved in initiation smoothening and coordination of the movement in humans diseases of basal ganglia as seen in parkinsonism produce significant impairment i mean impairment of control of posture and movement cerebellum is situated in the posterior to the motor neuro axis it receives inputs from almost all sensory modalities and projects heavily to the brain stem motor nuclei and motor cortex therefore cerebellum plays crucial role in the regulation of posture and movement it controls almost all aspects of movements starting from planning programming and initiation the smoothing and coordination and termination of the movement therefore the disease of cerebellum significantly display abnormalities of all aspects of movements thalamus is a major major sensory relay station in the brain the sensory inputs arising from different parts of the different body parts first relay in the thalamus before projecting to the cortex thalamus also receives input from cerebellum and basal ganglia thus thalamus plays an important role in sensory motor coordination so this is the overall uh, diagram which is uh, showing the control of the motor movement where the the movement gets initiated in the cerebral cortex through the corticospinal tract and corticobulbar tract and they are going to come to the spinal cord where the movement is executed and uh, the basal ganglia is also going to give its uh, feedback to these motor movements via thalamus and cerebellum Uh, also is going to uh, give its feedback via thalamus and it's also extensively connected to the cerebellum and also cerebral cortex from the spinal cord it is going to receive the ascending pathways which uh, gives the negative feedback mechanism so this is uh, in brief about the organization of the motor system Thank you.